Hi class, in this video I want to talk about normal distribution application problems. And I've actually set this example up, um, or this process up, when we were talking about the iPhone talk time in a previous lecture. So here was the problem. Suppose talk time on the iPhone 10 is normally distributed with mean of 20 hours and standard deviation of 5 hours. So we know the, the talk time, again, normally distributed in the mean and standard deviation. We're going to select an iPhone 10 at random, uh, and its talk time is recorded. So we're going to define a continuous random variable x to be the talk time on that randomly selected iPhone 10. And here was a question. What is the probability that the talk time on a randomly selected iPhone 10 is less than 18 hours? Okay, so this right here is an application problem. All right, you're not going to be able to use the empirical rule for this. Um, so you're going to need a new method. And we kind of set this up in a previous lecture when we were talking about the standard normal distribution. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk to you about the four steps to do this. And as I reference each step, I'm going to um, walk it through on the, on, the, on the next slide. So to do this, what you're going to need is you're going to need your trusty calculator. And you're also going to need the standard normal table. OK, so let's go through it. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to identify the variable and you're going to write the probability statement. So here, again, what is the probability the talk time is less than 18 hours? So we're going to let the random variable x be equal to um, the talk time on a random, randomly selected iPhone 10. And I want to find the probability that that talk time is less than 18 hours. Okay. So that's just step one. Identify the variable, which we did x, and then we write the probability statement. Next thing you need to do, and I highly suggest you do this, is you draw the normal density curve and shade in the area corresponding to the probability statement in step one. Okay, so what I mean by that? I know that talk time follows a normal distribution, all right? On average, they get 20 hours, and I want to be less than 18, okay? So I'm going to shade the area to the left, all right? So now what I showed you last class is, or, or last lecture, excuse me, um, you're going to need to convert this to z-scores to be able to use this table right here. All right, so the third thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to compute z-scores as needed. So for this problem, you only need one z-score, all right, because the z-score of 20 is just 0. So we're going to need the z-score for 18. And the z-score formula is just the x variable minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So it's 18 minus 20. The, the x variable is this value of interest right here. And the standard deviation was 5. So 18 minus 2, or 18 minus 20, excuse me, gets me minus 2 over 5, or minus 0 0.40. So once you've converted the z-score, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to use the standard normal table to find the corresponding area. So to go back, this now just becomes, what's the probability that a z-score is less than minus 0 0.40? And I just go to my table minus 0 0.4, and then the first row here is the 0. So minus 0 0.40, boom, the answer is 0.3446. Right there, we got it. Piece of cake. So this one, notice, just follow these four steps every time. Identify the variable, write the probability statement. I really find drawing the normal curve helps. Then you do z-scores and then you look up the corresponding probabil probability on the table. All right, let's do, let's do two more, okay? So what is the probability that that talk time on a randomly selected iPhone 10 is more than 24 hours? So I want to find the probability that that talk time X is more than 24 hours, okay? So that was step one. I already defined the variable here, so I'm not going to need to redo it again. So I'm just going to rewrite the prop. I'm going to write the new probability statement. Draw the density curve. So we know talk time is normally distributed, centered at 20, 
and I want to be greater than 24. So I'm going to shade now to the right because I want to be greater than. So I only need now to compute one z-score here. So this is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is 24 minus 20 over 5. Well, this is 4 over 5, or 0 0.80. So this now becomes, what's the probability a z-score is greater than 0 0.80? All right, well, we saw in a previous lecture that to find a tail area to the right, it's just going to be 1 minus, okay, whenever it's to the right. So now I'm going to look up 0 0.80. So I have to go to the positive side, 0 0.80. So 0 0.7881 right here. So this is 1 minus 0 0.7881. So this right here, 1 minus this would be 0. Point, I believe it would be 2119. And there you go. All right, let's do this last one. What is the probability that the talk time on a randomly selected iPhone now is between 17 and 21 hours? So I want to find the probability that that random variable x is between 17 and 21. So I'm going to draw now the density curve. All right, it's centered at 20. All right, I want to be between 17 and 21. So obviously this is not really drawn to scale here, but you just use the graph to get a good idea of what it looks like. Okay. So now how many z-scores are you going to need to complete, he, com, compute here? You're going to need to compute 2 right here. So I'm going to do the z-score for 21 first. So it's 21 minus the mean is 20 divided by 5. This is 1 over 5, or 0 0.20. The z-score for 17 is uh, the x variable minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So that would be 17 minus 20 divided by 5, which would be minus 3 over 5, which would be minus 0 0.60. So now this just becomes, hey, what's the probability a z-score is between these two values? OK, so remember the procedure here. You look up the higher value first, 0 0.20. So 0 0.20 is 0 0.5793 minus, now I'm going to look up this one, the lower z-score, negative 0 0.60. Negative 0 0.60 is 0 0.2743. And let's just grab our trusty calculator now to help us with this. So 0 0.5793 minus 0 0.2433. And you get 0 0.3360 when I round it, when I go to four decimal places here. All right, class, I'm going to follow this up with uh, another lecture um, with uh, some more examples, but roughly you can see the whole process here.